Greetings and welcome back. We've already started building up our game. We've asked the two critical questions when we start up, the firm name and the starting options. And we set some variables here, our cash, our debt, and our cannons that are going to be critical through the rest of the gameplay. So now we're going to go ahead and start setting up our game interface. Just a very basic game interface. Now, notice we've already got some repetitive things happening here. I have this divider line here that's already in here twice. And you can imagine it as we're doing things. We might use this over and over again. So one of the things that you can do in languages is create constants so that these kind of things don't, strings like this don't get hard coded into your, into your application. And so what I mean by this, and it's probably best by example, is I can cut this string from here by just coming in here and cutting it. And then I can come up here to the top and create a variable and in Python, there's no real concept of constants, meaning a variable that will never change. Instead, we just have to use a naming convention so that programmers know you shouldn't change it. So I'm going to just call this menu underscore divider. And by having it in all caps like that, that is a signal to the developers and other people looking at this code that you shouldn't be modifying, modifying this variable. And so I'm going to come down here and print it here and print it here. So we're starting to see just a little bit of concept of why you would do this. And you could even do that for other strings like this right here. We could come in here and call this game title. And then replace this down here with game title. And in a lot of ways, this is better code because we're putting all of our strings up here at the top. And so I would encourage you to do the same for the welcome message, do the same for the firm name, and even the starting options. Make constants for these and replace these strings out. I'll leave that for your exercise. So we've got our game title and we're putting out information. Um, let's go ahead and see how we can make this uh, uh, see this error here. Remember I had this commented last time. Let's go ahead and run this and watch what happens. We're going to get our firm name again, my firm. We're going to do the cash and debit. And notice now we have our first error. And you're going to have lots of errors as a developer. That just is what happens. And this one sh will tell you very clearly what's happening. We can only concatenate string to string, not int. So it knows that this is an integer. And you can see when I mouse over it, Visual Studio is telling me that it's 250 right there. And if I mouse over that, you'll see that's a string. So it's, it's trying to push a string into an integer and it can't do that. So you get your error. And you'll see, notice down here under locals, there's a lot of other things that come with having a good development environment. Notice I can see our cannons is zero, our dead, our firm name, and all these extra variables that are basically global variables that are available right now. It says local, but because we're in a main program here, this is pretty much all of the things that are available to you in your development environment within this particular execution of this application. So let's see how we can fix this. So one way we could fix this is come in here and put in an str and you'll notice that IntelliSense automatically fills this in for us in Visual Studio and your IDE whether you're in Ubuntu or Mac whichever IDE you're using should have similar capabilities. And so we can come here and wrap this cache in a function and it'll convert this integer into a string and then add it to cache. So we can run this now, reattach, and I guess it got caught back there. Yeah, there it is. Test, one, and you'll notice now it works fine. So one of the things that we'll want to do is you can see, go ahead, we're going to want to write out the debt, we're going to write out the cannons. There's a lot of things we're going to add, but you can notice that we're already starting to get a lot of code here and it's starting to add up. And that one of the things you're going to want to do as a developer is get at a very early stage breaking down your code into functions and making separate functions for separate operations. There's lots of principles to learn. One of them is a single responsibility principle. Really, it works with objects, but also works with functions. You should make functions that do one thing. And it does that one thing well, and that's what it does. And that way, when you call it, it's simple. You, the more things that are separate 
that are getting done within one application, the more likelihood you're going to have errors and it's going to be difficult to debug. It's going to be difficult to extend. So moving through this, let's see how we can take, for example, our initial welcome message here, our welcome to Python Pirate Trader, and let's create a function for our welcome method. And to create a function, we use a keyword def, and that you just have to know that that's in Python and in a space, and we can name this whatever we want. And I'm going to name it welcome message like that, and we use a colon at the end as well as parentheses like this right after it. So this is the syntax, and remember we have to indent in Python. So I'm going to just indent our print method, our, our print statement here. So this we've created the function. The problem is, is it's there's nothing calling it here. This just has the one line of code in it, but if we don't call welcome meth message, this will never happen. So let's see how we would do that. We can just come right underneath this and say welcome underscore message and open close parentheses. So this defines the function welcome underscore message. I might sometimes refer to these as methods, which um, inside of objects, when we start working with objects, we'll commonly refer to them as, as methods. But th this is a function that basically we've created a custom one that's going to print out that message for us. When this executes, this function runs. So let's run it. And you'll see there's our welcome to pirate trader. Please enter your firm name. So now let's do the same thing. We don't need to keep going here. Let's just go ahead and stop this. Let's do the same thing for our getting our firm name. So we'll say def get firm name. And notice we're still using this same convention of lowercase and underscores between the names. That's just the way Python is. So we're going to get the firm name. And we have, have this input here. And we can go ahead and print the firm name out like this. And let's see. Do we have the firm name printing later? We don't. So this will be fine, and this will run. So we're going to run this. Now, watch what happens if I don't have a call to get firm name. I've set the function up, but if I run it, we'll see that it's going to skip over it. It just says, welcome to Pirate Trader. How do you wish to start? And it didn't ask us for the firm name. And that's because, and you should know this, we haven't called it. So we come down here, get firm name. And notice how it's filling it in. In Visual Studio, I can hit tab. And then open close parentheses. Now it's going to call it. And let's put this here with a colon and a space, because that's kind of annoying me. So please enter your firm name. We're going to say, Pirate Trader Inc. And there you can see it printed it out for us. So just like that, we're creating functions and we're starting to get things a little more organized. We can do the same thing with our starting options. Def get starting options. Open close parentheses. And Take these and tab across, just like that. And just like this, we're going to have our get starting options. Remember, we're going to have to now call it. Now, a better way to design this is to bring these down here. So we have all of our functions at the top defined. We can put a comment here. We can say, start game so we know this is where the game starts and then we can come down here and say display main game interface so we're using comments to make this a little more clear and we have all our functions now up at the top that we've defined now it'd be nice if this worked just as is but we're gonna see that one of the problems we're having is that for example when we call this get firm name we're not printing this out down here. So let's go ahead and move our print statement because that's all we want it to do. Remember, single principle. We don't want to print the firm name in the same function that we are getting it. That would be two different responsibilities anyway. So we're going to get the firm name here and store it in firm name. But the problem is going to happen uh, that we're going to learn right here now is about scope. Once we set this firm name, when we fall out of here, we're not going to know what the firm name is. 
it's going to this this variable is only alive for lack of a better word or my vocabulary it is only valid through the scope of this function once we once this is done and this starts running this is not going to be val valid anymore and we're going to see that right here I'm going to go ahead and comment out the cache and we'll just worry right now about printing out the firm name. So let's go ahead and save and run. And it's going to ask us for our firm name. We'll say my fun firm. And it's asking us that question. And now notice that we get this error name, firm name is not defined. As I was explaining, firm name is getting defined in here. But we're not returning it back out. There's nothing that tells this main executing program what firm name is. So this is undefined. But we can fix that real quick. We're going to come right here. And this is basically how we return a value back from a function. I can come in here and say firm name equals. And when we call this method, just like we called it with input, and input returns back a value, we can return back values. And we return back values with the word that you would expect, return. So we return firm name. And now firm name is going to come right back out. We get it here, and then we return it back out, and when it returns back out, it's going to then assign it here into this variable. So now we can run this. Our firm name my fun firm again that sounds good cash now notice we have no problems and we have the the name just like we would expect it and this is really the preferred way that you would want to work with basic functions and methods you're returning values back here so we're seeing how to do that now we're going to have the same issue here with get starting option so let's do cash first and I would encourage you to pause the video. I'm not going to do this as a formal exercise. Pause the video and try to return cash from the starting options. I'm going to do it quickly for you. We're going to print it out here. So we're going to get cash. And I'm just going to come here and say cash equals. So we're just worrying about cash for now. And I can come now here and say return cash. Just like that. And we'll save it and run. Attach again. And we'll say my fun firm one. And notice now we got our cash back. Worked just like as expected. And it basically is the same as we did here. We're returning the firm name in this case. In this case, we're returning cash. But what if we need to return all three of these, which we do? Let's go ahead and see how we can do that. We can return debit, the debt, and the cannons and return them all into here, like this. So this is a nice little trick in Python. Now you know how to return multiple variables back from a function. So we can come down here, copy this, so we don't have to type as much. This becomes debt. This becomes debt. This becomes cannons. And this becomes cannons. So we're taking our values here, returning them into here. Let's save that all, attach and run my fun firm again. We're going to say we want cash and debt. And notice now we're getting all of our variables back and we're displaying them now, improving our game interface so we can see what the heck is going on. Now that's fun enough, but this is one way to do it. And I would actually probably prefer, I would, I, I would do it this way. There's nothing wrong with it to say, but I want an opportunity to teach you about tuples and tuples are basically just a way to have a list of data that you can't change and so I can take this for example and I can say this is 250 comma 250 comma 0 and so this would represent our cash this would represent our debt and this would represent our cannons I can come into this one and actually I need a variable here to store it in so I'll just call it ops for the option to short for options and this one I could make ops equals 0 comma 0 comma 5 meaning 0 uh, cash 0 debt and 5 cannons and then rather than returning back cash debt and cannons I just return back ops just like this and so what Python's gonna do is when it sees 
these three separated items with these commas, this list of items, it's called a tuple. They can't be changed. When it gets these and it returns them back from this function, it's going to slip them right into cache deck cannons, just like you would expect. So let's run this again. We'll just say my firm. We'll do the cache and debt. And there we go. We have the values back. So this is just an alternative way. It doesn't read as clean. So I wouldn't necessarily go with this way, but I want you I wanted an opportunity to show you tuples and how that would work. And so for that purpose, I, I think it, it serves its purpose well. So with that, I'm gonna wrap this video up. We've learned about functions. We've learned how to send, or I'm sorry, return values back from functions. We've learned how to return multiple values back from functions. And we've learned how to basically manage getting these multiple values back using two methods. One, assigning the variables explicitly. Otherwise, we can use tuples to send back multiple values and then push them in the same way here. So. With that said, I'm going to wrap this video up. In the next video, we're going to take a look a little bit more at our string formatting options and then get into a while loop so that we can actually create a game loop that we have a menu and we can start actually going and traveling between cities and fun things like that. So look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.